there are a lot of key villains out there in pop culture, but only three of them are this iconic. Skulking around in black robes, ready to just conquer the universe and kill all the heroes, just be general top tier baddies. Sauron from Lord of the Rings, Emperor Palpatine from Star Wars, and Voldemort from Harry Potter. So, who's coming out on top here? Who's going to win this fight? Become the true top villain of all time. Well, let's get into it. But before we get into it, we'll make sure you go subscribe. Only 20% of y'all are subscribed, so make sure you go change that, hit the subscribe button, and turn notifications. It helps out a ton, and plus, you can see awesome videos every single day. And if you already are subscribed, well, y'all are amazing. Y'all are just crushing life. So just keep on killing it. Now let's get it. And starting out, let's talk about the ultimate dark wizard. One of the most powerful wizards in history. He who must not be named Voldemort. And Voldemort is easily one of the most magical, one of the most powerful beings in Harry Potter, in the whole wizarding world. He knows basically every spell you can think of, every charm, jinx, or curse in the book even if we didn't actually see him cast it himself. So we're talking about spells that can cause explosions, stun people, blind them, or wrap them all up, or even spells that can cause other attacks to rebound and hit the other person. And that's really just scratching the surface. I mean, Dumbledore said that Voldemort was the most brilliant student that Hogwarts had ever seen. And that nowadays, well, Voldemort's magical knowledge is perhaps greater than anyone else alive. So yeah, it's safe to say that he knows pretty much everything about magic spells. It just kind of goes with the territory. He's extremely proficient with the dark arts, being able to send blasts of energy and cause massive explosions. He's a master when it comes to manipulating fire. Voldy is a little bit of a pyromaniac, and he's even able to straight up create snakes and other things out of fire. He's powerful when it comes to legamency, so don't even think about lying to him. He can possess bodies and plant thoughts in an opponent's head. He can cast powerful shields and essentially block or deflect every spell besides Avada Kedavra itself. Then there are the three unforgivable curses, Crucio, Imperius, and Avada Kedavra. Crucio is an unblockable curse, which can cause some severe pain to the person, even make them feel like their bones are on fire. Imperius is one of the Dark Lord's favorite spells, as it'll allow him to easily control minds and bend someone to his will. Comes in pretty handy when you're trying to raise up an evil army and do other Dark Lord things. Then his favorite and go-to attack, Avada Kedavra. Avada Kedavra is often considered to be one of the most powerful and most evil spells in all of Harry Potter. When used it successfully, well, it causes an instantaneous death, a one-shot insta-kill. The killing curse is also an unblockable curse, meaning that other magic can't block or stop the spell. Voldemort honestly is insanely powerful, being able to duel against Dumbledore, one of the most powerful wizards in the Harry Potter universe. He was even able to destroy the magical barrier protecting Hogwarts that was cast by multiple powerful wizards that dozens of Death Eaters weren't powerful enough to get through. Then there are his Horcruxes. Yeah, Voldemort figured out the trick to immortality, splitting his soul into seven pieces and then placing those souls in all different objects. This kind of makes him immortal because Voldemort can't truly be killed unless each of these horcruxes is destroyed first. And then next up, there's Sauron. And he knows a thing or two about creating powerful magical objects, because he's the master and creator of the One Ring. He's a servant of Melkor, who's basically Satan in Lord of the Rings. And Sauron is his greatest and most powerful servant, which will be putting him on the same level as Glaurung, the father of dragons, and Gothmog, the lord of the Balrogs. At his prime, he was the most powerful being in Middle-earth. Even Gandalf, a great wizard on his own, couldn't compare to Sauron. But more importantly, Sauron is a Maya, 
immortal beings who were around before time itself and powerful servants of the Valar, with the Valar being the godlike beings who were responsible for helping create the universe, for adding into the Song of Anor, as they sang everything into existence. And it's even possible that Sauron himself contributed to this song. Definitely not in the same way that the Valar did, but still, somewhat helping to create the whole universe. Sauron could control and manipulate fire, with flames and heat radiating from his body. He can control the weather itself, sending darkness and storms out in front of his armies whenever they marched. He can control the mountains and the earth itself. Like, just his presence is enough to cause Mount Doom to erupt, and he causes massive storms and waves to destroy Numenor. He's a master manipulator, can break minds and bend wills to his own, even straight up possess others. All things that come in really handy if you're evil and want to rule the world. And all this is wrapped up in his one ring. The ring was forged in the fires of Mount Doom, and Sauron actually put a lot of his own power into the ring. It basically amplifies his powers, allowing him to peer into the minds of the other ring bearers and control their thoughts. And it's even so pervasive that Sauron's mind domination powers is in the ring itself. That's why it's so hard to destroy the ring, because you're fighting against the ring itself and Sauron himself. Even people like Gandalf and Galadriel have to refuse the ring, because everyone would eventually break and succumb to Sauron, even the strongest of wills. He's also got the ability to not just dominate others' wills, but project his own. It's what allows him to control all his armies of orcs and trolls without ever even leaving his tower. Then last, but not least, Darth Sidious, Emperor Palpatine, the most powerful Sith Lord of all time. He rose his way up through the Galactic Senate, mastering politics and manipulation until he ended up becoming the Supreme Chancellor of the Senate, which made for an easy transition into becoming the Emperor of the Galactic Empire. Ultimately, he was the dude that caused the Clone Wars. He eradicated the Jedi almost entirely, created the largest empire the galaxy had ever seen, and nearly succeeded in squashing out all rebellion. And all the while, Palpatine was pulling the strings behind the scenes as Darth Sidious, the most powerful Sith Master to ever live, and the most powerful being in the galaxy. Sidious is a master of the Force, just an absolute master. He's become a Force Nexus being. He has essentially unlimited Force powers. I mean, just his hologram is enough to cause planetary level storms, and he's basically a black hole of force energy in an event horizon. And so it's safe to say, well, the guy can do dang near just about anything. He's able to overpower Yoda, overpower Darth Maul, and Savage Oppress at the same time, even overpower and force choke Count Dooku from straight up across the galaxy. He's able to beat up Yoda and kill Mace Windu with his force lightning. Basically, no Jedi is able to stop it. He is a master fighter, literally a master of every single style of lightsaber combat. His fighting style is constantly changing, making it impossible to actually get the better of him. And he's so good that he can defeat even the best Jedi in a lightsaber fight. He's able to sense attacks coming his way, see what people are doing all across the galaxy, read and know people's thoughts and emotions, and this works against literally anyone and everyone. He can make millions of people forget something's ever happened. Even Darth Vader, who is insanely powerful in the Force himself, literally has to obey Palpatine because of Sidious's power, and Palpatine knows each and every thought that Vader has ever had. Heck, the entire galactic empire, containing literally trillions of beings, is held together by Palpatine subtly controlling them. He's able to drain the life force from other people, 
draining whole planets and civilizations dry. Literally, billions of people in order to power himself up and fuel his dark side experiments. He can even create and control force storms, wormholes that can tear through space and time and destroy whole worlds. And he can have these things just popping up all over the galaxy. So, those are some pretty powerful bad guys. Who's coming out on top here? Who's gonna win? Well, I think pretty much instantly, Voldemort is out. He just can't compare with a literal god-like being and the most powerful force user of all time. He can't even kill a baby. He can't even beat a little kid. He's just undeniably the weakest. I don't even think the Horcruxes really help him out all that much. Because while he might be able to come back, his body can still be destroyed. He can still be killed. And then he's got to rely on his servants and helpers to reform his body. And that might even take a few whole decades to do. So yeah, I don't think Voldemort has a shot at winning here. So this is really Sauron versus Palpatine. And Sauron is crazy powerful. He might have even helped to create the universe itself. At the very least, he directly served under the beings that created the universe. Problem is, this doesn't really translate or scale to doing amazing in fights or battles. Sauron's power has never been in strength of arms or hand-to-hand -hand combat. That's not how power works in Tolkien's universe. The greatest power Sauron has is the ability to manipulate, lie, deceive, and control the wills of others. The ring is a tool of control, not a weapon for fist fighting. So having the ring doesn't make Sauron this incredible, unstoppable fighter. It makes him a tyrant of unrivaled wisdom and cunning, with the ability to dominate the minds of others. He manipulated the elves into creating the rings just so he can make the one to control them. He manipulated the men of Numenor into attacking Valinor, thus removing his greatest rivals for power. He manipulated Denethor, who was extremely strong-willed to the point that he committed suicide out of despair. He played Saruman, a fellow Maya, like an instrument. And this isn't to say that Sauron isn't a skilled fighter, he is. It's not to say that he's not powerful and not physically intimidating. He is. It's just to say that Sauron, at his core, isn't a fighter. In fact, in the few times where he's been in fights, he's lost. Sauron is even defeated by an elf and a man, Gilgalad and Elendil. And even though they were impressive, powerful people, and they did die alongside Sauron, they're still just people. Sauron one time even lost to a dog, a big tough dog, but still. And cause of that, you gotta say that Palpatine takes it. Palpatine at his best is able to destroy planets. He's the most powerful being in the galaxy, a master of the force. Now think he could beat Sauron in an actual fight. It might be a different story on if Sauron could manipulate Palpatine or not, if he could give Sidious a ring and break his will. But in an actual fight, Darth Sidious is taking that one. Emperor Palpatine wins. But what do y'all think? Sound off in the comments down below. I know you're gonna have thoughts and feelings on this one for sure. If you stuck around this long and made it to the end of the video, that's amazing. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting us. And if you want to go subscribe, well, go subscribe. You're going to see more videos like this one every single week. I'll see y'all then. I'll see y'all next time.